Tonight on Access TV, it's Gotham Comedy Live. Get ready to laugh with Bernadette Pauly, Mark Saratella, Al Ducharme, Adam Ray. This week's host, Jimmy J.J. Walker. Gotham Comedy Live, all happening right now. Ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy J.J. Walker! Well, people, here we are, the Gotham Comedy Club. New York City, babies. How many are here for the first time in the Gotham Comedy Club? Yeah. How many have been here before? And how many are here now? <laughs> no, you guys know me. I've been around for a long time. I, I just got an email from a friend of mine. Says uh, I couldn't believe this. Says Jimmy J.J. Walker has not been off the American airwaves in America in 37 years. Been on every day for 37 years. That's, that's ridiculous. Because you guys know, I go back with TV. You know that. I go way back. Matter of fact, here's how far back with television I go. I go back to the days, ladies and gentlemen, when there were only three channels on TV. That's right, three. Look at the young people over there going, on one screen? No, three channels, and you had to be the remote control for your dad. Yeah, your dad would go, turn to channel five. You go, oh, God. Now put on the aluminum foil, oh wee. Now hold on to the antenna. And see, nowadays, this is amazing to me with TV, man. I go back to the days, I'll tell you this. Not only were there only three channels, TV actually went off the air. <laughs> That's right, one o'clock in the morning you'd hear, da 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 See, in those days, we only had three channels, but we had some great shows, didn't we, people? Yeah. Unbelievable. We had the Honeymooners. Woo. That's right, we had Gunsmoke, we had Bonanza. Yeah. But nowadays, ladies and gentlemen, we have 600 channels on TV, and not a damn thing on TV. Woo. That's right. Everything, reality shows. Real Let me tell you something, people. I hate reality shows. I go back to this show, Survivor, hated it. And I'll tell you why, here's a show a couple years ago, takes place in Africa, and black people get voted off the island? Don't make me come out there with a blowgun and a pygmy, cause I'm gonna kill me somebody, damn it. And there's a lot of shows on now, man. And see, I feel sorry, I never say this, but I feel sorry for white people on TV. That's right, because they make y'all look terrible. They got some shows on now, the Hillbilly Owls. They got the Gator Boys. Honey Boo Boo. Duck Dynasty. Let me tell you something, Duck Dynasty got no problems. I guess y'all saw this, because Phil Robinson, who is the monarch of Duck Dynasty, allegedly made some anti-black, anti-homophobic remarks. Let me say something, people. We got a thing in this country called the First Amendment. If Phil Robinson wants to say what he wants to say, that's fine with me. I do not have a problem with the First Amendment because keep in mind, if you're watching Phil Robinson, you're watching Duck Dynasty. <laughs> what the hell did you think you were gonna see? You think you go back to Phil Robinson's house and see a picture of Richard Simmons and Martin Luther King hanging on the wall? <laughs> that ain't happening. And who else you got? Honey Boo Boo. A little three foot six, 192 pound girl walking around. I'm a redneck. I'm a redneck. Made me feel proud to be a black man. <laughs> and some stations trying to do a good job. I guess you know this. Of all stations, BET. Yes, they got a show on now called Black Honors. Have you seen this? This is a show where they give awards away to people and stuff like that. They gave an away award this year for the person who gave the most openings to black men. And they gave them the Kim Kardashian Vagina Award. (laughs) 
which I thought was very nice. I don't know about you guys. And then now even Latinos are getting into it. Univision, that's right, Latinos get in. They got a show out now called Latino Entrepreneurs. And this year they had a guy on who makes celebrity pinatas, okay? And they had a pinata of Kim Kardashian. And they opened it up and three black guys fell out. <laughs> it's some of, there's a lot of stuff going on in the news nowadays. What is it? This Donald Sterling thing. Oh my God! And they're trying to find a way to punish Donald Sterling. I know how to punish the guy. Put him in an elevator with Beyonce's sister. Woo. That girl was not playing around, was she? Man, and see, let me tell you something. The players upset me in this case. Because you know what the players said? They said, Donald Sterling is a slave owner, and he's treating us like slaves on a plantation. <laughs> let me tell you something, people. <laughs> I've seen Roots. I've seen 12 years a slave. <laughs> I've never seen a slave pull up to a plantation in a brand new Bentley. <laughs> That's right. Guy pulls up, yeah, let's go out and pick some cotton, man. Clean up my Mercedes while you're out there. <laughs> and what else they got? Oh, man, and this country's going crazy, man. I cannot believe what's going on in this doggone country. It's amazing, man. Unemployment, whoa! But the Obama administration, I guess you saw this, the last quarter, the Obama administration created 250,000 jobs. That's right. That's just the people who are looking for that Malaysian jet airliner. <laughs> What the hell happened there? <laughs> Didn't they tell us they said, this is the safest plane in the world. If it crashes in the ocean, it turns into a princess cruise liner. <laughs> if, if it crashes on the damn freeway out here, it turns into a Mercedes Benz bus. My, let me, they cannot find this thing. The world's biggest airline, they cannot find it. They got all sorts of things. Let me tell you what pisses me off about that. If I go through a red light on 48th Street, <laughs> They got a camera. There's a guy at my house with a summons. <laughs> what the devil's going on? But see, this is my kind of crowd. I like to see this kind of crowd because we got everything in here tonight. That's right. I love to see multiracial. We got everything. We got some Puerto Rican, Mexican people in the house tonight. I like to see that. <laughs> we, got some, uh, we got some Asian people in the house tonight. I like to see them. We got some black people in the house tonight. Almost made it to the front. Not quite. <laughs> and we got some white people in the house tonight. That's right, we had to let them in. They own the joint. <laughs> and people get so nervous about race. Yeah, people talk about race all the time. Yeah, people say, oh, I'm Irish American. Oh, I'm German American. Oh, I'm Russian American. Let me say this about that. <laughs> Ain't nobody going back to wherever the hell you came from. So we need to get our black, brown, and white behinds together and cut all the crap right now. Yeah. Man, well, that's about it for me. Have we been having fun so far at the Gotham Comedy Club? We got some people coming up who are gonna knock your socks off. We'll be right back. Sirenara! Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Bernadette Pauly is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs happening right now. Wow, that's why we come to New York City, babies, for this kind of response. And we got a young lady coming up here now. Woo! She is so talented. I cannot believe one of the finest comedians working today. I, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that she even made the scene, ladies and gentlemen. Because she don't have to be here. She got all kind of stuff going on. She was the host, matter of fact, of uh, Gossip Queens, big show on TV, cable, knocking them down. And she's with us here tonight. I cannot believe it. That's why I need y'all to get them hands together right now. And welcome, Miss Bernadette Pauly, ladies and gentlemen. He called me a young lady. 
He didn't call me ma'am. I like that guy. Hi, you're beautiful. I gotta talk about a problem in this country that you're all aware of. We need to do something about it. This problem is teenage girls who want me to read their ass. <laughs> right, you know what I'm talking about, pervy, don't you? Yes, you do. Yes, you do, you see them. You see them every day at the malls and outside the schools. I'm pink. Oh yeah, well I'm juicy. And I'm cutie, Whee! I don't wanna read your ass. I didn't go to school so I could read your ass. So I'm gonna start my very own sweatpants line for me and my girlfriends. They're gonna say, tired. <laughs> Sciatica. <laughs> and my number one bestseller, this used to be higher. Yes, yes, and we're gonna wear them proudly to the malls and we're gonna trip the juicy girls. <laughs> because we can. I also have my own t-shirt line, it's called Too Small to Sag. <laughs> Coming to a store near you. You know, people earlier tonight that were making fun of Kim Kardashian and I, I kind of feel funny doing that. I can't do it anymore because she's a mom, so it's kind of not appropriate. You guys knew that, right? Kim Kardashian and Kanye West, they just had Rosemary's baby a few months ago. <laughs> So, I like you, I like you, I really, really like you, Wee! Fourth of July is coming up. I don't know about you guys, but for me, the hardest part about not getting to see my family over the holidays, because I'm in the military, is worrying that they're gonna figure out I'm not really in the military. <laughs> but so far that shit's working. I send my mother sand from Iraq every year, but I just go get it on Long Beach. <laughs> what she doesn't know won't hurt her. But I kid, I adore my family, I love them. They're really good people, they gave me everything they never had, and I have to share with you, my dad, the best dad in all the universe, he left me a year ago, he went to heaven, and I will never, ever, ever get over that. Every day I ask God, why God? Why him? Why not Lindsay Lohan's dad? <laughs> But these are the spiritual questions one asks oneself. Drinking rosé. Watching Own with the dog. It's good to be back in New York. I had to move to LA three years ago. A little weird, a little tough, nice town, but you know, whatever, it's no New York. Good to be back here, walk around all the old neighborhoods. Hey, here's a little observation. Um, if you're in your 40s and you're still riding around on a Huffy, you've made some bad decisions in life. <laughs> Girls, do not date the 40-year-old on a Huffy. You can't hug his problems away. Unless it's a Cannondale, then a girl does what a girl has to do. <laughs> little cuties, look at you little cuties, you little 20-something shit kickers. <laughs> With your hope. <laughs> and your teeth. <laughs> I tell the girls, you know, I perform at a lot of colleges and they say, tell us about being in the world, lady. <laughs> how it is when you get there and you get out there. And I care about the girls, I'm a feminist. So what I like to tell you little 20 somethings, this is what I'm gonna tell you. And this is honest, honest, you're, listen, I'm trying to help you. <laughs> Don't give me attitude. <laughs> what you need to do while you still can is you need to trade sexual favors <laughs> for money, status, and career advancement. <laughs> they know. Otherwise, you're gonna end up trading them 15 years from now with your husband for a trip to Costco. <laughs> and as a feminist, I feel you guys need to aim high. Take it from a girl who knows. It's too late. <laughs> so yes, I live in LA now and it's quite interesting being like a regular gal in LA. I have the itty bitties. I'm not gonna waste my time with the double Ds, you know. And you know, I'm just a normal girl and they all look like, you know, supermodels. So I'm just like, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm like, you know, men are tripping over the supermodels and I come along like, hey, hey. And it's hard, cause you know, I'd like to find true love. I really would. 
but I'm holding out for Mr. Wright, and I know he's out there somewhere. But thank you for laughing at that. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh all you want, I know he's out there somewhere, okay? Yeah, I've been married the last few years, but I'm not gonna let that discourage me. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And when I find him, I'm gonna know what I don't want. Anybody here know the key to a good marriage? It's two words, Pinot Grigio. <laughs> it's funny, I drank red wine my whole life. I'm in LA a couple years, I like white wine. I like a nice Pinot Grigio. You put a little absolute in it, it really does the trick. <laughs> little tip from Bernadette Polly to you, who needs Martha Stewart? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, speaking of my husband, back to him. The other night, true story, we go to a cocktail lounge and this hot, half-naked waitress walks up to him, flirts with him, gives him a boner, and then leaves me to deal with that shit. <laughs> Can you imagine the nerve? I was like, I don't think so, get right back here. <laughs> yeah, you, you, get right back here, finish the job. <laughs> what do you think I'm tipping for? Nobody wants to work for anything anymore. This is why China is winning. <laughs> you know your marriage is solid when one day you wake up and realize the person you're married to hates you and you don't give a shit. <laughs> Isn't it liberating? That's when you're like, this baby's got legs. Huh? No mamsy pamsy divorce for us. I'm taking you to the grave. <laughs> You're going down, mofo. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, I watch OWN. I'm not supposed to be negative. <laughs> trying to be spiritual. Part of being spiritual is you're supposed to be grateful for what you already have instead of complaining, you know? So if I catch myself complaining about my husband, I stop. I look over at the couch at my husband and my dog sitting there and I say, oh my God, what was I thinking? I am so blessed to have that dog. <laughs> He's our kid. He's got my hair in my husband's eyes. Love him very much. I feel like I was negative. You know I'm not bashing the guys, right? I love my husband very much. He's the biggest blessing in my life. He really is. I'd never admit it in front of him, but it's true. And I hate to brag, every once in a while I'll check him out and I'll be like, oh my God, you're hot. <laughs> If you weren't married, I'd totally fuck you. <laughs> what a waste. You guys are awesome. I'm Bernadette Pauly. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Mark Saratella is taking the stage when we return. I am so happy to be here for this occasion, and I hope you guys are paying attention, because this young man, ladies and gentlemen, unbelievably making his first TV appearance ever in his career. How about that? So let's put the hands together right now and welcome Mr. Mark Saratella! First appearance right now. Yeah. New York City, round of applause. You're excited tonight to be in New York City. Round of applause, you're ready to go. It's comedy night, stand-up comedy show. I love it here. Like, it's comics go to terrible places. Like, I just got back from Mesquite, Nevada in the middle of nowhere. I walked in this casino, I saw toupees. I saw mullets. I saw my first toupee mullet. Disgrace. <laughs> Travel a lot as a comic. You know you're traveling way too much as a human being when you start staying in the same exact hotels and the maid starts calling you Hermano. <laughs> and you start calling her Gracias because you can't speak Spanish. <laughs> Just got back from San Francisco. Don't know if you've been there, but it's a, uh, one of our more sophisticated cities. But they have a very aggressive style of homeless person there. I go up to this ATM machine, there's a bum standing next to it. 
My $20 bill comes out. This guy goes, hey man, do you have any cash on you? I just held on, I have this. This bum actually offered to break it for me. Right, if you're a homeless dude and you can break a 20, you've got your bottle of Mad Dog, cluck out. Feels like the whole U.S. is getting crazier and crazier, right? Like I just read online that I said, United States, 80% of our truck drivers are high on crystal meth. Which means that 80% of truck drivers are giving 110%. <laughs> Statistics. <laughs> Crazy stories out there. You guys just see this guy was just killed when 500,000 bees landed on him. How do you get so fat <laughs> that 500,000 bees can fit on you at once? <laughs> These things happen, I guess. Another crazy story. You guys just see this one was attacked by a cheetah at the zoo in San Francisco. Then she's interviewed afterwards and actually goes, I'm traumatized, I feel like it's gonna happen again. <laughs> I mean, if you get attacked by a cheetah twice in your life, you're doing something wrong. Uh, either God hates you or you're molesting cheetahs. That's where we're at though. Any couples in the audience tonight? A round of applause, you got some couples out there? Are you amongst us? Difficult. I live in Los Angeles, by far the most difficult dating situation in the world. All these girls there get fake boobs. As if men were ever dissatisfied. It's like, girls, think what you've got. I've never taken off a girl's shirt and been like, these just won't do. <laughs> mm. You put your shirt on and get the hell out of here. Every time I'm ecstatic. <laughs> Even if there's only one. As long as it's a big one, that's all I'm asking for is. <laughs> Women's bodies looks complex, difficult to handle. You ever see a girl out there who's so pregnant it's scary? I walked into Dunkin' Donuts the other day. This girl was so pregnant, the fetus stuck its hand out, grabbed a donut and pulled it back in. It's disgusting. Parents are way too proud of their kids now, too. I don't remember this. Like, I was at the mall today, I look inside this stroller. In there is a baby with a full business suit on. What are you doing there? Do you think the other babies are looking at your baby like, whoa, that is a very successful baby. Where'd you meet your girl? Oh, geez, that's not a good sign. Did you hire this girl tonight? Who are you with here? Who is this girl? You met at your best friend's birthday party. That's not interesting at all. Sorry, guys, that's not you. It's just kind of a normal story. People meet on their cell phones now with Tinder. Have you guys done this? What type of way is this to meet another human being that you're gonna be with? Your parents didn't do this randomly on the phone. Your dad didn't just open up the phone book like, you know what? <laughs> uh. Uh. Donna, she sounds cute. I think I'll call her. She's within like a four mile radius. That'll be fine. <laughs> your parents met in a bar next to a jukebox after your dad punched a guy in the face. Seem like a good couple. You ever just been with a terrible person? Just someone who just criticizes you constantly for no reason? I was engaged at one point. One night, my ex-fiance just looked at me, she goes, Mark, I wish you'd just try to talk in bed more often. So next time I was going down or I just popped up, I said, hey girl. <laughs> that 
got some good eating pussy you got there. Did you put some syrup in there? Because it's pretty sweet. You should bring this thing to IHOP, charge 13 bucks to eat it. She never asked again, it was great. We got some stoners in here tonight, New York City. Stoners in the audience. It's the loudest stoners I've ever heard. I don't know if you guys are driven stoned, but you know you're driving stoned when you start stopping at red cars. And your friend just looks at you like, dude, what are you doing? It's like, I'm waiting for something green to pass. And he waves the bag of weed in front of your face and then you go. Not easy being a stoner. This is something you never want your boss overhear you yelling your first day on a job when you're a stoner. There's so much to remember here, fuck. I love stand-up comedy, best job I ever had in my life by far. Worst day I've ever had at work, I was 16 years old. I was working at Chuck E. Cheese as Chuck E. Cheese. And my best friend is driving one morning and halfway there he looks at me and goes, you know you, you know what you should do before you go in? You should take some acid. But I had never tried acid before. So I just thought it'd be like super strong weed. 45 minutes in the shift, it kicks in. This little kid runs up to me and goes, you're Chuck E. Cheese. And I freaked the fuck out. I actually ran from the building. You haven't lived about that tripping, running up the highway, dressed as Chuck E. Cheese. You can actually see people in their cars like, wait a minute, is that Chuck E. Cheese? Is he tripping? Am I tripping? What the hell is going on here? Hey, I'm Mark Saratelli. You guys are great tonight. Thank you very much, New York. Thank you. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Al Ducharme is taking the stage when we return. Welcome back to the Access TV presentation of Gotham Comedy Live. More laughs right now. Yeah, people! And uh, let me get another hand for Mark Saratella. First uh, shot for now. Yeah! Now! I want to introduce you to a friend of mine, really from Boston, lived in Los Angeles. Now he lives in Los Angeles. He was in New York, too. He lived all, this guy lives all over. He's spreading jokes. He's like the Johnny Appleseed of jokes. You know what I'm talking about? He spreads them all over the country. This young man worked Vegas with this guy, too. This guy works in Vegas, opening for a lot of people. Randy Travis, Cher, everybody like that. Well, oh, yeah, he's big time. This big time. We don't play around here. They go, big time. And this guy, big, 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 big time. That's right. This guy works all the time. Works 48 weeks a year. Only took off two weeks this year, you know what? To entertain the troops in Afghanistan, ladies and gentlemen. Let's put our hands together and welcome my good friend, Al Ducharme, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, thank you. Yes, I, I perform for the troops in Afghanistan, ladies and gentlemen. via Skype from New Jersey, but it, you know, I felt like I was there. I played Call of Duty for five hours beforehand. Doesn't that count? No, I'm kidding, I actually did go over there and I'll tell you right now, that place is, it's bad. It's, it's really bad. I, I wouldn't send my worst enemy there because he would be going home. Anyways, uh, I live with this absolutely gorgeous woman. She is stunning. Uh, it's new. She just moved into my building upstairs. I live downstairs with my wife. You know, I don't think a man realizes that when he proposes to a woman, he's actually transferring his power over to the woman instantly. Has no idea that it's about to happen. He's caught up in the moment. He's very nervous. Will you marry me? I'm a woman! Everything I say will be taken the wrong way. I'm just a big walking farting machine. Now that's the way it makes us feel sometimes, girls. Not all the time, but sometimes, most of the time. 
but it's a two-way street, isn't it, guys? Yeah. Not really. Yeah. <laughs> you see, the moment her finger goes through that engagement ring, it becomes the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> It's so beautiful, I can't believe it. Oh my goodness, I can't wait to show everybody. I'm so happy. I'm going to cry. It's so beautiful. Look at it. Look at it. I control you now. You screwed up. And you must obey me, or you will never see any of this precious. See? That is true, isn't it? Every man and every woman in this room knows that that particular area of the woman controls the entire universe. It has caused wars, and it has stopped conflicts. But a woman can make a man do whatever she wants when she figures it out. Could you come here, please? <laughs> Could you take that downstairs for me? <laughs> Must take downstairs. In the middle of the Super Bowl game. Because this is the only time that it can be done. Perhaps I'll be rewarded upon return. Probably not. Probably not. My wife and I, we've been trying, to, trying for a kid for about eight months now, and uh, no luck. We were driving around, checking out playgrounds. We didn't see any kids that looked like us, so we kept going. There was a cop, and it was weird. That's a joke. All my friends have children. They keep putting them on the phone with me when I call the house. That's a lot of fun when you're in a hurry, isn't it? There's someone who would like to say hello to you. You heard a little feet. Then they hand them the phone. This is all you hear for the next 30 seconds. What are you welding? What are you doing? And then they begin to communicate with you when you're in a hurry. I don't think you know what. I know I don't have time for this bullshit, I'll tell you that much. Get to the point, shit pants. I have a poker game to get to. I'm not mean to the children, by the way. I do not say these things directly to them. I just harbor it up here and then I share it with you. There was one time I was accused of being a little mean. You tell me what you think. I was getting ready to go through airport security. My friend puts his five-year-old on the phone with me. Five years old, he says, I'm watching Beauty and the Beast. I'm thinking he's way too young for Beauty and the Beast. So I said to him, because I was in a hurry, I said, wow, really? Are you watching it all by yourself? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he hung up. Can you believe it? All right. I'm not allowed over the house till he graduates high school, but uh, so be it. Now back to this woman that I live with. Not the one that just moved in, but my lovely wife. She's obsessed with scented candles. When she sees a candle store, she gets very excited about it. There's a scented candle store right over here. Yeah, there's a sports bar over there. I want you to go inside the scented candle store with me. Why, what did I do? I want to show you something. You want to show me something inside of a scented candle store? I wonder what could be in there. Could you stop acting like a jerk for one second? I'm serious. I would like for you to go inside the store with me now. I will leave my testicles out here. Won't be needing those. And this is what happens for the next 12 to 15 minutes. Smell this. I want you to smell that. Just smell that. Come here. Seriously. Come here. Will you just come here? Smell that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Smell that. That's really nice, that's really nice. It, it smells tropical. It's called coconut fresh. It smells like fresh coconuts. Come here, smell it. Oh my God, you're not gonna believe this. I don't believe any of this. 
I'm serious. What does that remind you of? How much I hate this place. Do you remember? Think, do you remember the bed and breakfast that we stayed in? Up in the mountains. Seven years ago. Remember when you first walked in, there was a big arch and there was a beautiful fresco painted underneath the arch, remember? Smell it again, think. When you first walked in, there was an arch. You had to walk under the arch, through the arch. When you first walked in, there was an arch. Smell it. Doesn't that remind you of the romantic place that we sat together? Smell it. Yeah, it's all coming back to me now. Holy. Hey, thank you very much. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV. Live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City, Adam Ray is taking the stage when we return. My legs are getting crazy. I need to bring on a guy I was lucky enough to do a pilot with about five years ago. It went so well, we're now here at the Gotham. But anyway, uh, <laughs> and you'll see him in a new movie with Sandra Bullock. He went on to do great things. It's called Heat. You've seen that movie? Well, this guy was the bad guy in that movie, and this is him right now. Let's get them hands together right here at Gotham, put them together, and welcome Mr. Adam Ray! Keep it going for me, yeah, come on. Fuck yeah. Oh, New York City. Fuck yeah, this is the shit. How you guys doing? A little high five to get it going, buddy? All right, good, that was a weird high five. Keep it going for this guy. Fucking stutter step high five. Uh, love New York City, I was just in Vegas for a week. Uh, that's way too long to be in Vegas. Uh, I'm not a big gambler, that's the problem. All my buddies uh, love to gamble. I can play blackjack, because you can actually build a little fun with a little bit of money, but all my buddies love roulette, which seems like the most unfun game of all time, right? Here's anybody playing roulette. Uh, black, fuck! Like, that's pretty much roulette in a heartbeat. That's it, congrats, you're a failure in two seconds. You gotta go home and tell your wife you can't even pick colors properly. That's. I'm sticking red, I said black, I wanted to say turquoise. It's not even an option, I'm a fucking disappointment. It's all fixed. Everybody wants me to go to the club in Vegas. Uh, you gotta go to the club tonight. We're going to the club? Dude, we gotta go. dude, I know the bouncer at Sweat. We gotta go to the club tonight. We, I could do it, I knew two for one down at Hostage. Do you ever notice all the club names are ironically named after the reasons you want to avoid the club in the first place? Right? Crowded, racism, it's just like... Oh my God, we had the most fun ever last night. Like, we all went out for Kelly's birthday. It was a great time. I wasn't expecting to have fun, you know? And then we had a lot of fun, which is like the best kind of fun, you know? And um, it was so unexpected fun is the best. And so we got a big group together for Kelly's birthday. We all went down to rape. And it was so fun. It was like, seriously, it was legit. It was a lot of fun, actually. It was really great. Hashtag blessed. It, was, it didn't happen. <laughs> I'm not a big club guy, that's a problem. I've uh, just never uh, been uh, something I'm into, and I know you, uh, you guys are like, oh, really? Well, then why does your fucking haircut look like that? All right, well, touche. Yeah. Sure, that's the elephant in the room. Let's talk about it for a couple minutes. <laughs> My hair used to be super long. I cut it short a few months ago, and I gotta uh, be honest, I feel like I'm doing it a disservice by not uh, fist bumping wherever I go around town. Like, that's not me at all, but I feel like, shit, man, when your head looks like this, you have a responsibility <laughs> to fucking bring the energy up whenever you enter a new room. People expect that out of you when this is the shape on top of your neck. Like, nobody's in a bad mood when they see this guy, dude. He's always, you always want to be in his circle. Even at the bank, I could be walking in like, what's up, I'm at the bank, 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 bank. And it's fucking, oh man. <laughs> Just really fired up to deposit $12, you know. Times are tough. The music at the club, too. I'm never on board with what they play. Uh, I want a club that's got all 90s music, because that's my favorite decade of tunes. Uh, yeah, it's the best era. Because you get the catchiest, most upbeat songs of all time. You can't be in a bad mood. I just got the 90s station on Sirius in my car. It's the best decision of 2014. I could have made, because every song is so catchy and upbeat. Dude, Color Me Bad's I Wanna Sex You Up comes on every other day. It's the fucking... Oh, if you haven't heard that song in a while, you gotta re-up your stock and Color Me Bad. These motherfuckers, it's so sexy. Dude, as soon as I hear... Ooh, Oh, shit. Oh, man. As soon as I hear that, I'm like, man, I'm getting way turned on, too turned on at 11 a.m. I gotta fucking pull over and find something. <laughs> Get a condom or something, or a person. But, you know, I don't pay attention to the lyrics of catchy songs, because I'm always jamming out to the melody. I'm just like, this is fucking catchy, right? <laughs> But when you're in traffic, you have a lot more time to hone in on the words, really pay attention to what's being sung. Uh, I don't know if you've done that to Color Me Bad's I Wanna Sex You Up recently. Holy shit, let me give you a few of the verses, ready? 
Girl, you know it feels so good. We can do it till we both wake up. <laughs> whoa, what the fuck? Whoa, whoa, back it up, man. You can do it till you both wake up. You guys been sleeping and fucking? Is that... <laughs> How do you fucking... Is that even safe? <laughs> And who initiates that shit? Yo, girl, I'm getting super turned on right now. What do you say we take some time off PM and see what happens tonight? I don't know where it's going, man. I'm tired of this awake fucking. That's so 1993. <laughs> the fights in Vegas are the best because everyone's so hammered. You can see the best couple fights, right? Because shit gets brought up. Uh, in Vegas, it doesn't get brought up when you're at home, right? Just We, just, we saw this great couple fight in the, the lobby of the New York, New York Casino. Just hammered, right? The girls just, you know, and he's like, oh. <laughs> I'm not even paraphrasing. That's what they were saying to each other. And they understood it. It was incredible. And then at the peak of the fight, I swear to fucking God, the dude does a cartwheel in front of her. Just out of nowhere, just does a car wheel at 2.30 in the morning. And I swear to God, at the end of the car wheel, with a lot of purpose and aggression, looks right at his girl and goes, boom! <laughs> <laughs> like he had something to prove, like as if moments prior she'd been questioning his car wheeling abilities. <laughs> oh, you think you're a man? You think you're a fucking man, really? I bet you can't even do a fucking car wheel right now. That's what a real man would do. <laughs> Boom! It's fucking. Oh, man. <laughs> Most dudes don't want to fight. I figure this out. If you ask most dudes, nine out of ten guys will all give you the same answer. Like, you know, I throw down. I throw down. I throw down. If I had to. If I had to. You know. If I if push came to shove and shove came to push and they were shoving and pushing and shove pushing and push shoving. You don't want that guy on your team. He's very wishy washy about the whole situation. He's always like, just shoving and pushing and nudging and bumping, dude, and bumping and grinding and dude. If a glare turned into a stare, poof, I don't care. It's like, yo, Dr. Seuss, don't fucking rhyme behind me. Nobody is intimidated by a rhyming dude in a polo shirt. Most of us don't want to fight, but we got so much testosterone running through us, it takes the smallest thing to set us off and get us into a ring. But you don't want to get to the point where action commences because you don't know what the other dude's dealing with. He could have 27 years of Brazilian jiu-jitsu locked in his fucking pinky, right? You make one wrong comment about his cat's haircut and he's like, oh, really, dude? Boom, now you're bleeding from the neck on a Tuesday. What's up? <laughs> You want to avoid that shit. But again, we got so much testosterone, we're so aggressive. The smallest thing to set us off, if you observe most bar fights, it's a lot of taunting and a lot of questions and nothing really happens. Just the smallest thing like, whoa, hey, what's up, dude? You good? Real good, dude. What's going on with you? <laughs> Not much, man. Was that your shoulder? <laughs> what's that, bro? <laughs> Was that my shoulder? I don't know, dude. Was it? <laughs> what do you not know what shoulders are, bro? I don't know. What do you think I am, a doctor? Why, dude? Are you a doctor? I don't know, bro. Is that your friend? Maybe. Who's asking? Do you like the fish? Are you guys fucking getting to know each other, man? Somebody punch somebody. This is not how fights are supposed to happen. Fucking kick them in the fucking dick or something. It's the worst date ever. Drinking uh, for me is bad because I get peer pressure when I drink a lot. I got uh, peer pressure to do mushrooms over the summer. Uh, no. Yeah, it's not. Nope. No booze. Nope. Way too intense. First of all, peer pressure's not going anywhere. You think you have enough self-discipline to make your own choices in life. There's always a reason to not want to miss out on the fun. My, my buddy's like, dude, you want to do mushrooms? I was like, no, man. He's like, come on. I was like, all right, when you put it like that, yeah, for sure. That's a good argument. <laughs> Shit. I didn't look at it from that angle. <laughs> it was my first time uh, doing mushrooms. It was also my first time talking to a daddy long legs about global warming. <laughs> yeah, super chatty, super chatty. Can't have sex on mushrooms. Uh, there's too many distractions. Yeah. <laughs> You're laughing. I was laughing too. She was not into that. Uh, she's like, oh my God, you're gonna be able to do this or what? I was like, uh, yeah, babe, maybe if the beanbag would shut the fuck up. All right, that's really distracting. I just turned 32, uh, celebrated last week by going to the Olive Garden. Um, <laughs> I was, a little, I was a little stoned, which uh, seemed like a fun and hilarious idea. It was one of the most traumatic afternoons of my life. Those deals you can't mentally prepare yourself for, <laughs> the, the, like never-ending pasta. I was like, holy shit, you mean I can pay $8 and eat spaghetti forever? Right? <laughs> I call my mom. People are way too excited about the Olive Garden. These, what if you've never been outside to eat in public before? Who are these people in Olive Garden commercials? Just... <laughs> <laughs> Gary, what is this, pasta primavera? <laughs> oh God, where the fuck are we? <laughs> it's like, dude, you ordered that five minutes ago. 
And here's the worst part. There's no black people in off-guard commercials, man. What the fuck? You guys eat there too? You can't put one black dude at a table just to diversify the meal situation? <laughs> just include him in the scenario. That's all I'm saying. He doesn't even have to say much. You give him one line, you cut to him real quick. He says something like, you know, motherfucking bottomless breadsticks, man. Look at that motherfucking breadsticks. You guys have been a lot of fun. My name's Adam, brother. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned for more laughs on Access TV, live from the Gotham Comedy Club in New York City. For all the comics on the show tonight, Bernadette Pauly was here. Mark Saratella was in the house. Al Duchamp was in the house. And of course, Adam Ray all the way.